Paz Cristo, buenos días, espero que todos están bien, es un gozo, es un regalo estar aquí con ustedes hermanos, uh, yo sé que hay muchos hermanos que tienen ganas de regresar aquí a este edificio, adentro, pero el Señor está haciendo grandes cosas ahorita hermanos en, las, en los servicios afuera um, para los jóvenes y los demás pero en este momento, hermanos, estamos agradecidos porque es tiempo de alabarle al Señor y darle algo profundo de nuestros corazones y almas. Amén. Entonces, hermanos, si ustedes están en casa, yo les voy a pedir que vamos a hacer algo raro, algo diferente. Vamos a ponernos de pie, si podemos. Si ustedes están en buena salud, vamos a ponernos de pie. Porque hay algo bonito, hay algo... Um, delicioso con nosotros entregamos algo profundo, algo de, de excelencia, amén, entonces vamos a, a ponernos de pie y levantar las manos, vamos a estirar y tratar de tocar el cielo con las manos porque en realidad si sí estamos tocando el rostro la presencia del Señor Jesucristo amén, vamos a hablar ahorita con libertad vamos a declarar las grandezas del Dios de los cielos y vamos a levantar esta ofrenda, amén Señor Jesucristo, Padre Altísimo, Dios Aleluya de los cielos, de la creación declaramos tu nombre Jesús, declaramos Aleluya tu autoridad nuestro Dios en los cielos y en esta tierra por toda eternidad tú reinas para siempre Señor Jesucristo tú eres mi Dios, tú eres mi Padre tú eres el eterno Rey y tú vienes pronto si tú crees hermano en la casa o aquí en este lugar si Él viene pronto vamos a declarar tú vienes pronto, tú vienes pronto Aleluya, toda la gloria y honra son tuyos Señor son tuyas y por eso Señor yo Aleluya me quedo Señor, Aleluya admirando Señor tu gloria, tu grandeza porque yo no merezco estar aquí no merezco, aleluya, conocer tu palabra. No merezco, aleluya, tener tu, aleluya, tu sea de salvación. Pero aquí estamos, Señor. Aquí estamos en este momento. Porque tú eres bueno, tú eres bueno, tú eres bueno. Si tú sabes que eres bueno, vamos a darle un aplauso, hermano. Hay algo hermoso que sucede cuando un hijo de Dios levanta las manos y le da gloria a su rey. Aleluya. Hay algo hermoso que pasa cuando uno habla con autoridad. Habla, aleluya, con ganas, con un deseo, hermanos. Oh, cuando sabe que nuestro Dios es grande y fuerte. Grande y fuerte es nuestro Dios 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 Vestido en la esta Toda gloria, 
hora sea para ti. Es conmigo grande y fuerte. Grande, fuerte, es nuestro Dios. Grande, fuerte, es nuestro Dios. hermanos que nosotros servimos al mismo Dios aleluya que es aleluya estuvo con Moisés y Josué hermanos cuando ellos aleluya recibieron la victoria sobre los, los enemigos servimos al mismo Dios de Eliseo aleluya de Elías nuestro Dios nos contesta a veces con fuego pero también contesta con un respiro aleluya de su boca un viento de los cielos ese mismo Dios aleluya, que puede darnos, darnos todo lo suficiente. Nuestro, nuestro Dios siempre está con nosotros en las montañas y las valles. Aleluya. Nuestro Dios es el mismo que nos manda lluvia. Oh, aleluya. ¿Cuántos de ustedes necesitan esa lluvia para refrescar nuestras almas y corazón? Vamos a levantar un canto en inglés que habla de Hosanna, nuestro rey, Hosanna, our King of Glory.
are mighty and wonderful, Lord. Oh, you're mighty today in this place. You are worthy today in this place, God. Oh, lift up your hand for just a moment and say, God, you are so worthy and so good and so wonderful. There's none like you. There's none like you. We want to thank God for all he's done. And we want to continue to pray for the needs of our church. Those that are, are healing and recuperating, we want to pray continually for those that are models that uh, are sick or, or had a procedure done. Vamos a continuar, hermanos, a orar por los hermanos que están enfermos o están recuperando. Nuestro pastor va a hablar más de eso en un momentito. Pero el Señor es bueno, hermanos. Vamos a continuar alabando, glorificando su nombre. Y aunque nosotros, puede ser que usted no, no, ha, usted no ha venido en mucho tiempo a este templo por cualquier razón, no se cabe duda que el Señor está moviendo en grandes maneras hermanos, el Señor está bendiciendo, el Señor está llenando, el Señor está haciendo grandes cosas y vamos a seguir adelante con gozo, con alegría, con victoria, amén, con nosotros nuestro pastor Leobardo Mafe, amén. Bueno, paz de Cristo, es para mí un grande gozo estar en la casa de Dios, dirigiéndome al pueblo más bendecido de todo el mundo, la iglesia de Sion. Pertenecemos, hermanos, al Dios Todopoderoso y gracias a Dios por sus bendiciones. Vamos a entrar a la palabra de Dios rápidamente. Vamos a leer ahí en Salmo 34.1 que dice, Bendeciré a Jehová en todo tiempo, su alabanza estará de continuo en mi boca. Una vez más, bendeciré a Jehová en todo tiempo, su alabanza estará de continuo en mi boca. Bendito y alabado seas tú para siempre. Te pedimos, Señor, que unjas mis labios, mi mente, mis pulmones en el nombre de Cristo Jesús y que tu palabra corra con libertad y pueda penetrar a todo corazón en donde quiera que se encuentre en el nombre de Cristo Jesús. Amén. Amén. Pueden sentarse en los que están parados. Vamos a titular este, este pensamiento orando y alabando a Dios en medio de la angustia. Cuando leamos al capítulo 16 del libro Los Hechos, vemos a Pablo arribando a la ciudad de Filipos en donde primeramente oye el Evangelio una empresaria vendedora de púrpura llamada Lidia, quien se entrega al Señor. Des después de esto, acontece que en un día, mientras Pablo y sus compañeros viajaban a la oración, le sale al encuentro una muchacha que tenía espíritu de adivinación. Esta joven era una esclava, y su trabajo de adivinar le daba gran ganancia a sus amos. No sabemos, hermanos, por qué esta mujer seguía a Pablo y a sus compañeros. Dando voces diciendo, estos hombres son siervos de Dios Altísimo, quienes nos anuncian el camino de salvación. Una de las cosas que notamos cuando leemos la palabra de Dios es que el enemigo Satanás, él conoce quiénes somos nosotros. El enemigo sabe que nosotros estamos sirviendo al Dios Altísimo. Él sabe eso. Y esta mujer lo hizo por muchos días, de, a tal grado que Pablo se molesta y le ordena al Espíritu, te mando en el nombre de Jesucristo que salgas de ella y el Espíritu inmundo, Salió de ella en aquella misma hora. Al Señor sea la honra y la gloria. Los ambos al darse cuenta que su ganancia del trabajo de adivinación de la esclava se había esfumado. Hermanos se enfurecen, prenden a Pablo y a Silas y los traen al foro. El foro era el centro de la ciudad en donde se llevaban a cabo los juicios públicos. Los acusan de alborotar la ciudad y de enseñar costumbres de las cuales son ilícitas para los romanos. 
Entonces el pueblo se amontina en contra de los siervos de Dios y los oficiales judiciales le rasgan la, ro la ropa y ordenan que sean azotados con varas. Y dice la Biblia, hermano, la Biblia dice que los siervos de Dios fueron azotados mucho. Y en la manera que lo hicieron estos oficiales era injusto, pues ellos deberían de haber pasado por un juicio razonable y legal. Después del azote, Pablo y Silas son entregados al carcelero quien tiene órdenes de situarlos con la más alta seguridad. Vamos a los siervos de Dios en el calabozo de más adentro con los pies amarrados y nos imaginamos que el calabozo, hermanos, era todo oscuro, no había ventilación, estaba sumamente sucio y un hedor horrible. Allí se encontraban Pablo y Silas. Además, estaban sumamente heridos con sus espaldas ensangrentadas, llenos de llagas las cuales supuraban líquido. Podemos afirmar que Pablo y Silas estaban experimentando muchísimo dolor por los golpes, pero ¿qué pasa? A la medianoche empiezan a orar y cantar himnos a Dios. Al Señor sea la honra y la gloria. Hermano, no se estaban quejando, no se estaban levantando o estaban cuestionando a Dios por qué es que Él había permitido que ellos sufrieran de tal modo. No. Es interesante notar que la situación por la que confrontaban los siervos de Dios no dictó su relación con Dios. La conducta y postura de Pablo y Silas no es de unos prisioneros deprimidos, derrotados, abatidos o vencidos. Sus cánticos y alabanzas revelan que estos hombres estaban llenos de agradecimiento de júbilo, de gozo, de optimismo y confianza en su Dios. Así debe ser la iglesia del Señor. La iglesia de Sion, la iglesia del, del Señor, pasemos por lo que pasemos, debemos hermanos de estar sumamente agradecidos con Dios porque Él es bueno, porque para siempre es su misericordia. De nosotros debe de haber júbilo y gozo y mucho optimismo y sobre todo confianza en nuestro Dios. Los demás prisioneros se han de haber sorprendido porque no creo que ellos hayan escuchado a otros prisioneros cantar y se decían entre ellos, Qué raro estos, estos judíos están alabando a, a su Dios y lo están haciendo con mucho gusto. Afectaron la vida de los otros prisioneros. Y quiero decirles algo, hermano. Las canciones que entonaron Pablo y Silas describían la esencia y la naturaleza de Dios. Los cantos que cantaban estos hombres, hermanos, eh, 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 en primer lugar, hablaban de la multitud de las piedades de Dios. Tu en su infinita misericordia, de su amor que no podemos medir su altura, profundidad, longitud o anchura, porque su amor es infinito. Tal vez cantaban acerca de la supereminente, oh, supereminente grandeza del poder de Dios. Porque nada es imposible para Dios. Nuestro Dios sostiene el universo. Nos, nuestro Dios, hermanos, aleluya, su poder es tan grande. Que no hay nada imposible para Él. O tal vez cantaban acerca de su eternidad. ¿Por qué? Nuestro Dios no tiene principio ni tiene fin. 
o tal vez entonaban acerca de la veracidad de Dios porque Dios no puede mentir en mis oraciones diarios le digo Señor tu palabra es la verdad tus promesas son verdad porque tú no puedes mentir eso me da confianza me da mucha confianza en Dios o tal vez cantaban acerca de la santidad de Dios hermano nuestro Dios es santo Él es perfecto como le gritaba Moisés antes de morir Dios de verdad, Dios de verdad y sin ninguna iniquidad en Él pero creo que ellos cantaban con todo su corazón al mi cuerpo porque el Señor Jesucristo había dado su vida por ellos y ahora ellos eran hijos de Dios y siervos del Dios Altísimo al Señor sea la honra y la gloria se sentía privilegiados de ser llamados hijos de Dios así como nosotros Qué privilegio ser llamados o hechos hijos de Dios. Y dice la Biblia que de un de repente sobrevino un gran terremoto, de tal manera que los, que las, los cimientos de la cárcel se sacudían y al instante se abrieron todas las puertas y las cadenas de todos se soltaron. Despertó el carcelero y viendo abiertas las puertas de la cárcel sacó la espada y se iba a suicidar. Pensando que los presos habían oído Pero Pablo le grita Diciéndole no te hagas mal Pues todos estamos aquí El hombre templan, temblando Se postra sobre los pies de Pablo Y Silas y les dice ¿Qué debo hacer para ser salvo? Le dicen Cree en el Señor Jesucristo Y serás salvo tú Y tu casa Debido a este gran acontecimiento El carcelero y toda su familia se entrega al Señor y son bautizados en el nombre del Señor Jesucristo. Iglesia, ¿qué debemos de hacer cuando llega la tempestad a nuestras vidas? Nos aconseja David, debemos de bendecir a Jehová en todo tiempo y su alabanza estará de continuo en mi boca. La alabanza a nuestro Dios no debe de parar en medio de las luchas y de las pruebas. Nos dice el Levita en el Salmo 42, ¿por qué te abates su oh alma mía o por qué te turbo dentro de mí? Espera en Dios, ahí está, espera en Dios porque aún he de alabarle, salvación mía y Dios mío. Hermanos, es imperativo que en medio de la prueba, cuando las gigantescas olas de la tribulación nos quieran derribar, levantemos nuestras manos y alcemos nuestros ojos hacia el cielo y alabemos a Dios, porque para siempre es su misericordia. Y porque dice el Salmo 22 que Dios habita en medio de la alabanza de su pueblo. Cuando usted levanta sus manos y empieza a alabar a Dios, ahí está el Señor Jesucristo ayudándolo, bendiciéndole, dale, dotándolo de paz, de gozo, tranquilidad y de todo lo que usted necesita. Y es que en, en, en Isaías, capítulo 57, 15, dice, Dios habita la eternidad, Habita la altura y habita la santidad, pero Dios también habita con el quebrantado y humilde de espíritu. Allí en la, allí en medio del quebrantamiento, cuando parece que todo va mal, allí en medio de la soledad. No podemos ver el futuro y parece que todo va en contra de nosotros ahí está Dios ahí está Dios que nos dice no te dejaré no te desampararé estoy contigo 
hijo mío, hija mía. Y por eso tenemos que alabar a Dios con todo el corazón. Señor, gracias por tu palabra en esta mañana. Te pedimos, Señor, que sea de mucha bendición, que haya sido mucha bendición para tu iglesia. Sigue bendiciendo esta hermosa congregación, Señor, que sigamos adelante, que sigamos alabándote. No importa lo que venga, no importa la, la dificultad, no importa la lucha, la prueba, las olas contrarias, ayúdanos y bendícenos en el nombre del Señor Jesucristo. Amén. Así que nuestro hermano Leo Maffei con el mensaje en inglés. Amén. Hermanos, paz de Cristo, praise the Lord, church. Es un privilegio para mí una vez más estar aquí uh, por la gracia y la misericordia del Señor Jesucristo. It is such a privilege to be able to greet you all in the powerful, wonderful name of Jesus. And uh, one more time, our hearts, our thoughts, and all of our prayers before the Lord Jesus um, are for uh, Minister Dan Rodriguez and also for Minister Baltasar. Um, uh, we know that the Lord is with each of them, and that the Lord is protecting and strengthening them in Jesus' name. Um, the Lord has a, a word for us today, and I would ask you to go with me to the book of Exodus chapter 19 and verse 4. If you could turn there with me in Jesus' name. We are excited about what God is doing in uh, the outside services and the youth services and the, the three Spanish services that we um, Uh, brothers and sisters are experiencing. God is moving in a wonderful and a powerful way. No doubt about that. But we are also looking forward in Jesus' name. Hopefully very soon that, that these four walls can be opened up. And so that we can be together once again and worship God and feel his presence in that same building. Exodus 19.4 reads in the following way. It says, you have seen what I did to the Egyptians and how I bore you on eagles' wings and brought you to myself. These are God's words. Again, we're going to read. You have seen what I did to the Egyptians and how I bore you on eagles' wings and brought you to myself. Bow your heads with me. There where you are, brothers and sisters, friends. Jesus, we give you praise. We give you honor and all of the glory. Oh, God, because you are gracious. God, because you are love. You are my almighty. Oh, you are everlasting in strength. You are limitless in wisdom and in power. And hallelujah, in every way. Hallelujah, you cannot be measured. And we present your word to you. That you would impart your word to our hearts that our hearts would be ripe and ready to receive your purpose for our life today. We give you honor and glory in the powerful name of Jesus. We pray where you are, you can give God praise because he is worthy to receive everything that we can give to him. In Jesus' name, amen. Today, the Lord has given us a scripture and this word entitled, On Eagle's Wings, On Eagle's Wings. Eagles are mentioned many times in God's word. We know that perhaps they are best known as those birds that can rise up to the highest altitude, reaching heights of 10,000 feet and using very little energy because they are not necessarily flying, but they soar. They soar. They glide. And they don't lose altitude. But here in the scripture, the Bible is teaching us something different about the eagle. How about how the eagle mom or dad demonstrates tenderness and care toward its young. Reflecting on this scripture, one writer wrote, No member of the bird family is more gentle and attentive in watching over its young. It builds its nest high up on a mountain crag. Both parents bring food to the little eaglets. And when they teach them to fly, both parents are involved in the training program. As the little one takes off 
from that dizzy height and attempts to follow its parents in flight, the eagle swoops beneath it and bears the little fellow on its wings when he seems exhausted. Thus the eagle is set before us as being a symbol of God's dealing with his people as he bore them on eagle's wings. In fact, what the Lord is speaking to us today, church, is that Jesus himself is the one that bears his church on his wings. Jesus is the one himself that carries us. Hallelujah, that lifts us. He is the one that strengthens us. But we have no ability to get up. He pulls us up and he takes us where we need to go in accordance with his plan and his purpose because of his power and his grace. You and I can have victory today. I said because of of his power and grace because of his love you and I do not need to worry because we serve a mighty God that picks us up and he gives us a, a, not only a ride but he gives us a glide to where we need to go because we are merely strolling through this earth and it is temporary, but what God is taking to us, he is taking us on an eternal flight. He is taking us on an eternal path. And the Apostle Paul reflects on this. He reflects on the God that if he is for us, then who can be against us? And in fact, he concludes Nothing shall separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. No one can stand against. Nothing can come against. Not, no obstacle can come between the Lord and his purpose for your life. Nothing, hallelujah, can cause you to fall forever. No, but it is only because God is the one that is with us. He is the one that is on our side. He is the one that is at our side. He is the one that holds our hand. He is the one that carries us. He is the one that embraces you right there where you are. And he is the one that knows. He is the one that sees you from a distance and understands your need. And he is able to come near and bring healing. He is able to come and bring victory. He is able to come and transform you and give you salvation and give you hope and give you promise and give you a tomorrow. And give you an eternal destiny to give you sonship and daughtership to make you a child so that you can look up and you can cry to him and you know that he is there with you. Hallelujah. Can we give God hallelujah praise today? Can we thank him because he alone is good? Can you thank him right now because he is right there and he is by our side? God carries you. He carries me on wings of protection. I believe that the writer of Psalm 91 could have very well been the prophet Moses who was a witness of how God had delivered Israel from all of the different judgments and plagues and the slavements of Egypt through seas and through battles against all odds God delivered them. And Psalm 91 says, he shall cover you with his feathers, and under his wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. We can think of that little baby eagle being comforted and finding refuge in its mother's wings. And when I think about that, I think about my little daughter, Danielle, who every single night, she doesn't fail. It's rather an exception when she doesn't come to our bed and I find myself in a corner. But she goes and she goes up near mom and, and, and she finds refuge. She finds comfort. She finds uh, protection. She finds um, cariño, if I can say that. And her mom, and we all remember that, right? We all remember being, I remember when I was a kid, the best place was to be between my mom and my dad. I just wanted to be there. I didn't want to even get up. Amen? And the same way, the Bible teaches us that God, that his Holy Spirit testifies with our spirit. His eternal spirit 
bears witness with our little spirit that in fact we are his children. And by him and because what he has done, we are able to cry out, Abba, Father, Heavenly Father, we can cry out to God who bears us on wings that protect us, who never, hallelujah, leaves us alone, the Bible says, as orphans but who has promised to be with us until the end of all ages and beyond. Because our God that we serve, church, he is so very good. And I want us to begin to just meditate on that fact that he is great, that he never stops being great even though we face difficult times. He never ceases to be the wonderful God that he is. He never stops embracing. He never stops protecting. Hallelujah. He never stops comforting. He never, hallelujah, gives us a place to be afraid. He never gives us an opportunity, hallelujah, to be fearful because he is always there. Give God praise because the God that we serve is there. He's there. He's there with us. And the God that we serve is so amazing and he's so awesome. That's why the psalmist goes on to say, you shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day, nor of the pestilence that walks in the darkness, nor of the destruction that lays wait at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side and ten thousand at your right hand. But only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked. And then David writes in the famous Psalm 23, Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. And he follows that up by saying, For thou art with me. For you, Lord Jesus, you are with me. Your rod and your staff they comfort me. The good shepherd that lays down his life for the sheep is the one that guards and protects us with wings of protection, wings of provision. The God takes the God that made us and created us, and he gave his life through Jesus on Calvary, is also the God of provision. And Deuteronomy says, man shall not live by bread alone, but by, man shall live by every word that proceedeth from the mouth of God. And while in the wilderness, we read that the Israelites were allowed to hunger so that they could learn to depend on Almighty God. So that they could understand that life didn't come from the substance of this world. Rather, life comes from that eternal spirit that all almighty God. That's where life comes from. So that when we understand in our walk who God is and what is it that he does and what is it that he provides, we can come to realize that he is the one that is only able to supply our deepest needs, not a physical need. Yes, God supplies that, of course, but I'm talking about that need that's so deep inside. You don't even know where to start when you are in a place in your darkest hour and you're in a place of sickness or you're in a place of weakness are you in a place where you don't know where to go? You don't know how to get in and you don't know how to get out. That is a place where we can lift up our hearts to the Lord and lift them up and say, Jesus, my heart, my soul, they long for you. But guess what? We can know that God is going to provide the quench for our thirst. He's going to be the one that can satisfy your hunger. He is the only one that can fill you. He is the only one that can satisfy you and that's why the word of God says as the deer pants for the water brooks so pants my soul for you oh God my soul thirsts for God my soul hungers for God my soul is craving oh your spirit my soul desires to be rejoicing oh for not only hallelujah anything else but who but for the living God the word of God says 
And that's why, as the pastor was saying, we cannot stop praising him. We cannot stop worshiping him. We cannot stop exalting him. And we cannot stop living for him. For the Bible says, we praise him for the water that Jesus gives us that quenches our inner thirst. But the Bible says, this water that he gives us becomes a fountain of water that springs up into everlasting life. And what the Bible is referring to is God's awesome and God's Holy Spirit. God takes us on the wings of power. God takes us on wings of everlasting power. The word of God says, That nation of Israel was in bondage, delivered from slavery, brought into an intimate relation with Almighty God. God made a powerful way. Israel escaped ten plagues, and God lifted up waters that came crashing down on their enemies. But what I want to preach today is that God has also made a way today. He has made a way through the Lord Jesus Christ who obtained redemption, who obtained salvation 2,000 years ago on a lonely cross and then he resurrected from death so that he could come and powerfully give us, hallelujah, a life that is not only abundant, church, but he has given us a life that is eternal, a life that will never end, You and I have a destiny. We have a date of destiny with God. For all eternity, for all eternity, we will be in the presence of God. Why? Because he takes us on wings of power. He takes us on wings of power. And that's why God overcame death. Because the Bible says, in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised in corruption and we shall be changed. Brother and sister, my friend, if you give your life to Jesus, if you walk in Jesus, this short short stroll will soon turn into an eternal flight and you will be able to know God and he will be able to see you face to face. The Lord Jesus has also, by his power, he's overcome sin for us. The Bible says sin no longer has reign over us. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. Because God's wings of power have overcome Satan himself. They have overcome every force of darkness. They have overcome every lie. They have overcome every disease. The hallelujah, the power that of God that we serve has overcome every single thing that we will face. And that's why Paul rejoices with the Corinthians. And he says, now thanks be to God who always lives leads us in triumph in Jesus Christ and through us diffuses the fragrance of his knowledge in every place. God has brought us near to himself. God has brought us near to himself. God brought Israel down to the foot of Mount Sinai And the word of God says that when they arrived, they were full of fear because there were thunders and lightnings and a thick cloud upon the mountain. And because of God's power, he caused that mountain to shake. Why? Because his power was being manifested just a little bit. The Israelites were just getting a little glimpse of the might and the power and the strength of the God that they had just made a commitment to. But they were not allowed to come up that mountain. No. The Bible says they could not even touch that border. Because God was demonstrating to them that he was not only perfect in power. But the God that we serve is perfect in holiness. And God was painting the picture for them. For what they would see every year as a high priest full of fear walked through into the most holy place with the blood of the sacrifice and sprinkle the blood over that Ark of the Covenant so that 
God would somehow forgive him and forgive the people. But what God has done today is that God has brought us so close to him because he himself came to be our high priest. He himself walked through those doors from the outer court where he himself was slain and to the inner court and into the holy place and into the most holy place. And so because of the blood of Jesus, all the promises of God are brought forth to a reality in our life through his resurrection. And so you and I, through every single thing, we have that constant promise and that constant presence of his spirit. Oh, mighty God, thank you, Jesus, for your spirit that never leaves me, that never leaves my brother, that never leaves my sister, that doesn't depart from my children, but carries me through every corner of my life. It carries me through every height. It carries me through every depth. It carries me through every sickness and in health and in darkness and in light and in today and in every day tomorrow for everlasting because that is the God that we serve. He is a God that holds true to his promises. He doesn't just make his promises but the word that he speaks never comes to come, comes back to him empty. He speaks not in vain but he speaks in truth and God is accomplishing his truth in our life. Do you believe that today? Do you believe that today that God he is a God of truth and he is a God that carries through on his promises and every single day from now until forever he has promised to be with us. I'm going to invite you to bow your heads with me right now and let's just go before Jesus. Jesus, we give you praise. Lord, I give you honor and I give you all of the glory. I thank you, God, for your beautiful grace and your love for the caressing, Lord, movement of your spirit. The way your spirit, Lord Jesus, it doesn't just hold us, but it shows us the affection that we are filled with, that we are satisfied with, that we are protected, that we, Lord, are, are, are held and we are carried. Oh, Lord, I thank you because you are so good and because you have done and you do all these things. I present your church Presento a mis hermanos, mis hermanas, oh Cristo Jesús, que tú, Señor, los bendiga, los, los, los guarda, los protege, los, los llena más de tu presencia, that you would fill, Lord, my brothers and sisters with your spirit, and that you would reassure them right here and right now that you will never leave them. We give you all honor and we give you all the glory. In the powerful name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Can we, even those of us that are here, can we give God a hand praise? Because he is so good and he is so awesome. I'd like to present uh, with us at, at this time is our youth pastor and assistant pastor, uh, Minister Stephen Maffei. God bless you all. Amen. Praise God. It's wonderful when you can hear the word of God and also learn something. I, I was looking up eagles the other, the other day, a couple months ago, with my son Joshua, trying to get him more into animals. And uh, I learned a couple of things about eagles, but I didn't, I didn't read that part about how they carry their young. Um, so I wonder, I wonder if eagles get, get a chance to sleep at night, because our kids don't always let us sleep at night, but hopefully the eagles do, amen? But what a wonderful thing when, when you think about the Word of God and how God does really carry us. Sometimes, I know you guys are witnesses, right? You don't know how you got through that situation. You don't know how you got to where you are today. And you might not know how you're going to get into next week sometimes, but you know the one who's carrying you. You know the one who is with you is faithful. And what more could we ask for, amen, than the God that we serve to be our Lord and our King and our Savior. Qué hermosa palabra, hermanos, nos ha dado el Señor. Pues dos palabras, amen. El Señor es... es, es es fiel y está con nosotros. Y lo que decía nuestro hermano Leo es que el Señor nos lleva, así como las águilas um, andan volando y cargan 
a, a sus bebitos, el Señor también nos carga. Hay veces que, no, que se nos hace, que, que la vida se nos hace pesado, uh, muy pesada. El Señor está con nosotros y aunque nosotros no tenemos fuerzas, Él siempre está en control. Él nos carga, Él nos da el ánimo, el gozo y la victoria y el éxito en cada circunstancia. Hermanos, el Señor es, es bueno y tenemos que... Um, concluir este servicio, pero antes de eso queremos hacer unas cosas. Um, primeramente, muchas gracias a los hermanos que siguen dando. Thank you so much to all those that are giving. You help literally keep the lights on in church. You help us uh, to be able to have these services. So thank you so much for your generosity. Muchas gracias, hermanos, por los diezmos, las ofrendas. Sin su ayuda no podemos tener servicio, no podemos uh, seguir alabando en este edificio. Um, vamos a seguir dando por el Venmo o um, en persona, en los servicios afuera, en el patio. Entonces vamos a seguir haciendo eso. Y también uh, vamos a, a escoger un día para ayunar esta semana. Cada persona, cada hermano tiene necesidad. Y si usted no tiene, necesidad, tiene una necesidad, por favor, ayuna por su hermano. Porque yo sí sé que hay algunos hermanos que tienen muchas necesidades. Nos vamos a ayunar un día esta semana. Young people, as well, please continue to fast um, and pray during the week. Y tambi también, hermanos, vamos a tener oración mañana en los hogares a las 7 p.m. Si ustedes no trabajan, si están uh, disponibles, vamos a, a orar a las 7 p.m. en nuestros hogares. Y como usted, ustedes han visto, uh, hay estudios um, bíblicos los martes a las 7.30 p.m., entonces, vamos a apagar la televisión y vamos a poner las otras cosas a un lado y vamos a, um, vamos a comer el pan del cielo a las 7.30. For those of you that haven't had a chance, we do have Bible studies at 7.30 on Tuesdays on Facebook. So go ahead and tune in at that time. And then for this Tuesday, for the young people, we are at, right after Pastor finishes speaking, or, uh, or Brother uh, Leo, our, our assistant pastor, if he's speaking, we're going to go ahead and, and go on to, 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 uh, to Zoom, and we're going to have our Tuesday talk sessions, where it's going to be a very casual atmosphere, but we are going get, to get a chance to hear everyone um, and see everyone uh, at that time. So about 7.45 or 8 o'clock when, when, uh, when the, the word is finished. Y también, hermanos, vamos a orar por los hermanos que están pasando por algo. El hermano Dan, um, que, que tuvo que tener una, una cirugía. Um, este fin, esta semana vamos a orar para que el Señor um, esté con él. Si está con él, vamos a orar por nuestra hermana Eva y su familia. Uh, y yo estoy muy um, agradecido por esa familia porque ellos han sido una gran bendición para pa mi familia y también a esta iglesia, estos siervos de Dios um, son fieles, pero el Señor es más fiel y va a estar con mi hermana y su familia. Y yo sé que las cosas, eh, eh, las cosas son difíciles, pero el Señor está con nosotros y todo va a salir bien. Amén. Y también nuestro hermano ministro Baltasar también está pasando por cosas con su salud. Vamos a orar por él, en su esposa y sus hijos. Um, y vamos a, a, a ponernos a, a, de rodilla y vamos a orar por, el, por los, esos hermanos cada día. Y también hermanos, nuestros hermanos, um, no de esta iglesia, pero Pastor Jimmy García y uh, su familia. Y también el, el ministro Christian Rodríguez um, que se enfermaron. Pero yo sé que el hermano Christian um, me decía que, que va bien, va mejorando. Entonces, hermanos, hay muchas necesidades, pero vamos a seguir creyendo, reclamando la victoria del Señor Jesucristo. Amén. Así como, hermanos, están de pie, vamos a orar y para terminar ese servicio. Señor Jesucristo, te damos gracias porque tú eres, Señor, poderoso y tú eres nuestro Dios, tú eres fiel, tú estás aquí en este lugar. Oramos, Señor, por cada hermano que está presente, Señor, en el Internet, Lord, o también en este lugar, 
Que tú, Señor, llene cada persona con tu gozo, con tu alegría y que nosotros seguimos adelante, Señor. Yo te pido, Señor, que podamos ver tu mano en nuestras vidas, Señor. Que no seamos gente ordinaria, pero que nosotros seamos gente de poder, gente, Señor, de unción, gente, Señor, que siempre te, tiene una sonrisa en la cara porque tú estás en nuestros corazones, porque nuestra esperanza no está en este mundo, nuestra esperanza no está en lo político, nuestra esperanza no está en el dinero pero nuestra esperanza está en el nombre del Señor Jesucristo y si sí vamos a llegar, si ustedes creen que van a, vamos a llegar en la casa, si usted cree conmigo vamos a darle un aplauso y así vamos a terminar, adelante hermanos adelante, amén